Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks Sr., your host, and this is Community Focus. This morning, we have a distinguished guest, uh, Dr. John R. Malarczyk. Malarczyk, right. Uh, he's a pathologist uh, from Lake Bluff, Illinois, and he is a person that you should know. Good morning, uh, Dr. Malarczyk. Good morning, Dr. Brooks. It's uh, really an honor to be here today. This is fantastic. Uh, this is Memorial uh, <coughs> Day weekend yes. that we just completed, recognizing the veterans that have uh, <coughs> that served um, all over the world for us, that we may be safe in this country. And um, But I'd like for you, first of all, uh, uh, Lake County is approximately 800,000 people, uh, but I don't know how many up at um, 5 o'clock this morning, <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, Sunday morning, you know, uh, listen to the program. But it's my understanding that the <clears throat> audience is getting larger and larger. Um, tell our listening audience a little bit about your personal and professional background. Okay, do I have about six hours? Uh, <laughs> uh, 20 minutes. We could do this in about five, maybe. Okay. Uh, I'm John Menarsik. I'm, I'm a pathologist. I grew up in the Chicago area. Okay. I uh, <coughs> went to a medical school at the University of Illinois, and I during medical school, I very much enjoyed my rotations through pathology. Okay. I decided to go into pathology. Uh, with a little bit of hesitation at first, but now I realize it was the very, very best thing to match my personality. And uh, I did my residency in the Chicago area and then went into private practice for, oh, uh, probably more years than I want to uh, admit, probably about 30 years. Uh, practiced in Florida most of the time. Yeah, about eight years ago, actually 10 years ago now, my wife took ill. Mm. And she passed away shortly thereafter. And, wow, and when she about that. became ill, I quit my practice and started teaching uh, at the age of about 55. And now I'm 65, and I've been teaching for 10 years. And it's absolutely the best thing uh, I have ever done in my life. I feel like it's a real calling, finally, rather than just looking at slides and charging mm -hmm. for them. I actually have uh, influence over uh, medical students in over, uh, over 100 countries. Wow. Well, well, tell us this. Uh, how does that work? Uh, you say you have medical influence over with medical students over 100 countries, but how do you reach them? Okay, well, uh, it's the same way everybody is reaching people now. It's uh, through the Internet. Okay. When I taught here at the local medical school, Chicago Medical School, I noticed that uh, every year it was kind of repetitive. I would be showing them cases in the anatomy lab or showing them things under the microscope or mm -hmm. teaching a course in a classroom where I'm walking around in an auditorium. And uh, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I just mm -hmm. connected my microscope to the internet and I showed everybody the slides under the microscope online, make some movies and do the same thing not only for microscopic uh, uh, course called histology but a course in uh, pathology which is the single most important course that students take in medical school because it combines the basic sciences of biochemistry, genetics, anatomy, histology, and connects them with clinical medicine or the science of human diseases. So uh, I made a whole bunch of movies uh, when mm. I was at the medical school. It's almost up to a thousand by now. Uh, and I put it online and uh, I just felt like it was a good thing to do. I would basically talk into a microphone like I am now while I'm looking at the slide and I had a pointer. I was able to point out under the microscope what this cell was or what this tumor was or how this tumor was behaving or mm -hmm. why this uh, colon was not normal, why it was inflamed or had a tumor or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it wound up getting a tremendous response. And I found out that all over the world, students were watching them in great numbers. And now uh, it's almost 11 million uh, viewings on my movies in YouTube, and it's probably even twice as much in some of the other uh, video uh, internet places that have picked it up. Uh, also what I did as a secondary step to that is when this uh, Real Science of Webinar came out a couple years ago, started really getting popular, 
I thought maybe I should rather than just make a movie and put it online and hope some student somewhere looks at it, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can actually just uh, give the lecture, but rather than in the lecture hall, give it from my little home studio, which is a lot like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got out my pathology book, which is the number one medical school pathology book used all over the world. It's called Robbins. Mm -hmm. It's edited by my friend, Dr. Vinay Kumar at the University of Chicago. This book is responsible for teaching medical students all over the world the science of diseases. And uh, I some of that stuff was very familiar to me because I practiced pathology for 30 years. Some mm-hmm. of it was new, you know, some of the genetic information, some of the newer stuff I had to learn again myself. And I packaged it in a nice PowerPoint format and I put in a lot of nice pictures because pathology is a science of pictures, mm-hmm. looking at pictures of diseases, either under the microscope or on an autopsy table or in the operating room. And what we did then is uh, now it's the, we've done four complete years of webinars. And sometimes I've done the webinar strictly from my office studio. And sometimes I've done them while I'm in a real medical school auditorium. Like a uh, year before last, I did this from a very nice Caribbean island of St. Kitts. And mm-hmm, this past mm-hmm. year, I went to Puerto Rico from... Oh, let's say approximately November to February during the time of the year people would love to go to Puerto Rico. And Mm -hmm. I actually taught the medical student pathology course in an auditorium. Mm -hmm. But while I was teaching in an auditorium, I was wearing a wireless headset. Okay. And so it was also being broadcasted simultaneously. And then it was uh, probably for every two hours lectures that I give, I spend about four or five hours making the movies, formatting the movies, editing, compressing the movies. And I put them online on my website, which is medicalschoolpathology.com. And uh, if the students just want to see the popular, nice movies, they can go to YouTube. But if they want to see the extreme high-resolution movies where they can see actual fine details of all the cellular aspects of disease then they could download the movies or watch them streaming from my website. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're talking with an exemplary person, uh, uh, Dr. John R. Molosik from Lake Bluff, Illinois. And he's been, (coughs) this is his first time by radio, uh, but he's uh, been doing extraordinary uh, teaching um, all over the world uh, through YouTube and and online and so forth. Um, Dr. Manosik, how about evaluation of your students? Okay, I guess that means trying to create a profile, correct? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, uh, when a student registers for my course, and last year there were over 2,000, okay. uh, one of the things that they fill out on their uh, questionnaire is what country they're from. Okay. So if I had to make a profile of my students, I will say most of them are medical students. Now, some of them may be dental students. Some of them may be in a program for you know, nurse, a practitioner, but it's generally a higher level of training. And they may be actually going to a regular medical school, or perhaps they will be taking pathology next year and they want to watch something a little more digestible or decaffeinated before they actually get into the hardcore stuff. And the number one country that my students are from is a place called the United States. Okay. And then very close behind, country number two is India. Mm. So uh, the third biggest country for my medical students is Pakistan. Mm. Okay. And I get a lot from Europe, a lot from Canada. Amazingly, one of the really, really big countries, maybe it's number four, is Egypt. Oh, And uh, I once had a map that I put on my website where they're all from. But uh, when I counted them up last time, it was over 105 countries. That makes me feel really, really proud. And, you know, some of the students that uh, attend my course, they're generally all pretty smart. You know, they can ask a question 
with their microphones while they're on the webinar, but most of them prefer to just type in a chat question like, oh, what is the cause of uh, colon cancer or something mm-hmm. like that? Mm-hmm. And then uh, I either answer that when I'm not speaking or sometimes I get another pathologist to sit in with me. And while I'm focusing on my uh, organized material, they're actually typing back with their chat questions. Uh, I want to point out a factor, as long as you brought up profiling, uh, the big, big, big factor, and that's an economic factor. Mm -hmm. I want to make every one of your listeners aware that in the United States, like the medical schools I've taught at in the United States, Mm -hmm. for one year of tuition is between thirty and sixty thousand dollars per year. That's wow. one year of medical school. Okay. The average burden of debt for the average U.S. medical student who don't have rich parents, okay, uh, which most of them don't, mm-hmm. is two hundred thousand dollars. So when they get out of medical school, they bought a house. Right. Right. They're two thousand dollars in debt. At the medical school I taught at over here, the burden of debt was uh, almost 300000 mm. And I am very, very proud to say that I give as good as or better a course than the school I taught at here or anywhere free, completely wow. free. I don't have ads. I don't take PayPal. I'm not a ka doctor. Uh, give me your visa number. I don't Mm -hmm. walk around like a prostitute looking for sponsors. I don't have flashy ads on my website. It's just something I've decided to do free now that I'm an old man of 65. And I have (laughs) uh, had such a wonderful life, uh, wonderful life financially as well. I figure it's time to give back a little bit. And the, um, the course that I give is the same or higher level of any medical school in the country, but it's free. The problem is when the students take their exams at their medical school to see if they pass or fail, or when they take an even more important exam called USMLE, this is the so-called board exam. This Mm -hmm. is the United States medical licensing exam. Mm -hmm. Uh, I try to gear my course by what I know about the USMLE. But for example, if they if they attend my course and they do well in it, I don't give exams, but if they really pay attention and they really f- connect with what I'm saying, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to pass their questions that their own medical school gives. Mm-hmm. They may like mine better, but when they get their exams at their medical school, it's not going to be what Dr. Menarsik talked about. It's going to be whatever their professor right. talked about. Exactly. Some of the medical schools in the uh, country, in the hemisphere, uh, actually use my course in lieu of their own course. But guess what? They don't give the students a tuition rebate. Okay. And right. they don't give me any money either. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Dr. Manosik is a creator of the world's first free, real-time, global, complete medical school pathology course. That's course, correct. the first. That's correct. This this is fantastic, and and I thought the uh, Lake County really should know, how does a person enroll in your course? You know, how do they well, make contact with you? I have, uh, on my YouTube, when you when you put up a movie on YouTube, if somebody likes it, they subscribe to it. Okay. Now, out of the 11 million times my movies have been seen on YouTube, I wound up collecting, as of today, I just clicked over the 17,000 uh, subscriber mark. Okay. So I make a little movie in... Uh, let's say August, and I say, okay, kids, the new course is going to start on, you know, the Tuesday after Labor Day, and then they show up, you know, by the hundreds. Okay. And then I notice that uh, they generally uh, can tell their friends about it. Um, maybe their, their school does not advertise my course. That's the one thing that they don't do. 
Okay. But uh, I'm pretty widely known uh, on the internet for teaching pathology. Word gets around. And another thing that I've noticed is that my first few sessions, I'll have uh, maybe a couple of hundred students. But as the year goes on, that tapers down to like about 100 or less, maybe 50. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're a professor in a medical school and you see your attendance go down, you get a little bit uh, sad. You think, am I saying something wrong? But I notice that as my uh, online real-time attendance goes down, my movies go up. Mm -hmm. So if I have 2,000 registered students, most of those people are going to be watching the movies at one time or another. Why? Because it's at their convenience. When you go to a medical school, they don't give the uh, lecture when at two in the morning while you're having a beer, you know, sitting on the couch with your girlfriend. They okay. give it at 10 in the morning. You have to show up. You have to put on clothes, shave, fight traffic, you know, mm -hmm. hope you don't get a ticket from the campus police. But with mine, uh, they could be oh, listening to it from their uh, iPad, or they could just be watching the movies. Wow. Uh, tell me, though, uh, you were a director of pathology course, the Shoal School of Medicine right. at Roslyn Franklin University, right. too, right? Right. Right. Uh, and the course that I gave there was not that different from the one that I give now, but it was given while I was in an auditorium, okay, and they had a big projection monitor in the back of the auditorium, and we had pretty good student attendance. I never force, you can't force a student, or you can't mm -hmm. take role, you can't take attendance, because you know we're doctors. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. not hall monitors, we're doctors. Mm -hmm. If people are not coming to your class, you can assume maybe they're getting their education elsewhere, or in my case, I know they'll probably be watching my movies. Okay. Or maybe they're in their research lab, you know, working on a Nobel Prize rather than listening to Dr. Menarsen. <laughs> you know, it, um, I'm, I'm quite f familiar with uh, uh, David McKay was at the, he was a curator. That's that, correct. Yeah, you, David. You, you, yeah, good man. He's retired now, but uh, very good man. We had lunch together several times, so that's mm -hmm. fantastic. Well, it's a small world, though. Well, tell us about, I noticed that you uh, observed you um, uh, making um, several um, visits to the North Chicago City Council meeting. Uh, uh, describe your observation of the City Council meeting. Okay, well, we'll switch now from education to what I might call, I don't know, let's call it sleazy politics. I can't think of a better word. Okay. Uh, some At some time, shortly after... Uh, Darren Hanna was murdered by the six police who covered it up. Yeah, that was, uh, let's see, November, November 6, of, uh, 2011. It's about almost two years now, uh -huh. a year and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah. I went to a city council meeting to find out what it's all about, and I, I was shocked, and I'm still shocked because I'm still going to the meetings regularly okay. that a, a man was beat to death to the point that his own mother couldn't even recognize him. Similar to the Emmett Till um, murder in um, uh, Money, Mississippi, and uh, that was um, probably 1955, I believe it yes. was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in going to the meetings repetitively and regularly, I saw nothing but extreme protests of screaming and injustice and marching. And I saw a mayor, Rockingham, who just sat there with a grin on his face. Whoa. I saw a former coroner who actually issued a false diagnosis. Undetermined, he said. Uh, he yeah. called, a boy gets beat to death to the point where his mother can't even recognize him, and the coroner calls the manner of death undetermined. Mm -hmm. And then, of mm -hmm. course, when we had Dr. Rudd finally come in, a real doctor, a real pathologist like myself, mm -hmm. he tried to straighten the whole thing out. But I'm looking at the mayor. I'm looking at the chief of police. I'm looking at the state's attorney who are just turning their heads the other way. Okay, Dr. Brooks, that makes me sick. So just as though I vowed 
that I would never charge a medical student a penny okay. to learn medicine from me. I also vowed I will never stop going to the North Chicago meetings until I see the murderers punished. Okay. I mean, I, I can't believe this is America. I can't believe, I mean, I, I'm just still astounded. I'm, you know, I get, I was talking to you a little bit before the show. I went a little ballistic out there in the hallway and um, I would, you know, if, if you have listeners now and I would like to say something, I would like to say, you know, please support the fact that a family here has had their son beaten to death by the police and the whole incident was covered up with lies for the last two years at the highest levels. The police chief, the mayor, for cor- former coroner Yancey, and now the current state's attorney, Nurheim. They seem to pretend like it never happened. Amazing. What do, what do you, this is America, Dr. Brooks. What do you do about something like that? Mm-hmm. You know, in, uh, in Mississippi, um, uh, things like that happened and uh, nothing was done until the civil rights laws were passed. But now this is a different age and we expect different because we have civilized people now uh, running our government, running our police department and running our state's attorney's office. And uh, the former state's attorney says reasonable and proper was it reasonable and proper? Reasonable force was used reasonable in force handling is. Mr. Hanna. And he died. He was beaten to death. Mm-hmm. And the former state's attorney, Waller, called that reasonable force. Well, I would like to show him the picture of Mr. Hanna with a face that well, didn't even look like a face, eyes popping out. Her own mother couldn't recognize him. And I'd say, if this is reasonable force, Mr. Waller and Mr. Nurheim, what is your definition of unreasonable? Speaking of politics, though, the information was uh, submitted by the mayor and city council uh, to uh, the attorney general's office, uh, Lisa Madigan, and, uh, but uh, no word has been uh, mm-hmm. returned. So I wonder, uh, are they making this a political issue now, too? You know? Well, I, I am not a big fan of the way feds do things, mm-hmm. uh, but they really have no reason to rubber stamp the local dishonest politicians mm-hmm. in Lake County. Mm-hmm. And I still have a faith that they will do the right thing. And the last time I visited, Mr. Nurheim, I didn't say much, but I said, do the right okay. thing. Okay. I'm still giving them the benefit of a doubt, but it doesn't look good because now we still have six policemen who haven't even been suspended pending the investigation. You know, they're out crippling more people on the streets. Ladies and gentlemen, the dirty six. We're, we're talking with Dr. Uh, John uh, Minozik, uh, outstanding person, um, teaching a course on uh, pathology worldwide uh, through YouTube and uh, um, that for free, free of charge to any student that may want to enroll. Uh, he's also um, changed gears and uh, f- uh, he's taken time to come to the North Chicago City Council meeting, which you have been reading about and hearing about um, uh, the uh, the murder of uh, Darren Dagwood Hanna of uh, the city of uh, North Chicago, policeman six that beat him to death, unrecognizable by his mother. And his mother um, uh, is asking for justice. Uh, now, she's filed a civil suit, and uh, she'll get uh, maybe a couple million, uh, several million dollars from the civil suit that the insurance company uh, will pay, and uh, North Chicago would take a chance on losing the insurance company or paying higher rates as a result. But the civil suit is taken care of uh, by Attorney O'Connor. But uh, but but she's asking for justice that the six policemen were never uh, suspended or taken off the uh, force uh, until the case is resolved, and the policemen are still on the street, and the citizens of North Chicago are very concerned. 
uh, because the same policemen that beat Darren Hannah to death are still on the on the streets, um, and the citizens are just praying that this never never happen again. Um, Dr. Minosik, it, it appears that the police operate on their own with limited training. Uh, I think we had a um, investigator, um, uh, Peterson, Ralph Peterson Jr. Nice. Yes. Uh, he's investigating and brought all the material. Really, the material came back from the police department. Uh, he got videos and and um, uh, of the beating and and uh, of I uh, see Mr. Austin, I guess another person that's in a wheelchair now, that was uh, in on a, in Dallas taking dialysis when uh, this happened. And uh, you think it's because of the limited training that they had, or uh, they just assumed that nothing was going to be done? I don't know. You know, uh, Doctor Brooks. When I was a kid, I had a pretty good idea of what America was like. And honestly, in the last few years, I've seen more and more and more of what George Orwell called the police state. Okay. It seems like the police are out of control at the local and national level. It seems Mm -hmm. like a lot of our freedoms, not just the Second Amendment, but a whole bunch of other ones are being attacked. I don't think we have much privacy anymore. I don't think we have much uh, right uh, to uh, much of the rights that were guaranteed by our Constitution, not just the right to bear arms, but the, the rights for privacy, uh, the rights not to be detained. Mm-hmm. I've seen a whole series of laws come around uh, justified by the so-called terrorism that mm-hmm. we're supposed to believe is rampant, so mm-hmm. we've given up a lot of our rights. And so it's not surprising that the police state is here and the police can do whatever they want, include kill people. Fantastic. Dr. M- M- Monarzik, do you have any time for leisure time activities? Oh, yeah, a lot, because <laughs> teaching is all I do, and it's basically two mornings a week and then another couple mornings for preparing. So I have more hobbies than I could talk about. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a real, real big nut on uh, crossword puzzles. And now yeah. this crossword addiction has kind of eased down. And now I'm totally into Scrabble. I do Scrabble online all day. I don't think there's a single listener right now that could beat me in Scrabble. <laughs> so I'm really, really lucky. Yeah. I make computers in my basement. Oh. I do a lot of kayaking down the little rivers that go into the Mississippi River. Okay. And, uh, oh, I could probably enumerate a whole bunch of others, but those are the big ones. You've had military experience too, right? I was in the uh, Army Reserves for six years. I did my time. Okay, yeah. Well, I I did uh, two years, but uh, Mm. 16 months of those in Korea. Oh. So I'm uh, a veteran also. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you. Thank you. And and same to you, yeah. well, I, I want to thank you very much uh, for uh, taking time uh, from your busy schedule to come down to the studio uh, to uh, talk about your career. And uh, um, we haven't had Dr. Rudd yet, but Dr. Rudd, uh, the newly elected coroner, uh, did a uh, fantastic, is, is doing a fantastic job mm-hmm. as coroner because he is a professional coroner. He's a, he's right? a hero. Mm-hmm. Dr. Rudd is in a position in his life where there's nothing that can stop him from finding the truth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Lake County is very fortunate uh, uh, to have. And, uh, and we all, the citizens of Lake County always wonder uh, because they haven't had a corner, uh, a professionally trained corner in quite a while. Right. I think that was uh, a secretary once. Um, it was an, uh, uh, that was a uh, was a sister, oh Barbara Richardson, yeah, and and she was state corner for quite some time, and then uh, uh, the Mr. Le- Yancey, uh, you know, was the police chief, was right. corner, and uh, the 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 uh, establishment was saying that you don't have to be a doctor to be a corner because, but there's a lot of people beg to differ. So they. Dr. Rudd was uh, was elected. Dr. Rudd is the first uh, coroner in Lake County in history oh. to bring in the scientific application of medical 
principles to the investigation of death Mm -hmm. rather than just put down on a piece of paper like Mr. Yancey did, whatever the police told him was the cause of death. Dr. John Malonsic, pathologist, Lake Bluff, Illinois, thank you very much for stopping by the studio and sharing your expertise with uh, Lake County citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Community Focus. My name is Dr. Wandell Brooks, Sr., your host.